Good morning to everyone, who are, uh, whether you're joining us in person or on a recording. Welcome to First Lutheran Church uh, this September 19th, the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. I can't believe it's been that many Sundays since Pentecost, but here we are uh, at, at the end of summer working into our, our autumn season. It's so good to see everyone on the screen today. Uh, I'm going to invite Matthew, our arts, uh, worship arts director, uh, to, to share the announcements this morning. I'm Dan Potasnik. I'm, I'm normally just a digital minister, uh, but I'm also uh, the preacher for you all this morning. So excited to see you. Good morning, everyone. Um, just a few announcements as we kick off this morning's worship service. Uh, first and foremost, we are greeted this morning by Katie, Jeff, and Zoe. Um, and so thank you for welcoming us uh, into service today. And there they are waving on the screen, which is great. Um, just a couple of uh, just a couple of announcements. We have Faith Formation Club in Washington Park uh, next week. I will say that that is tentative, um, depending on um, we're still waiting to hear back from the transept, and depending on the number of COVID cases and whatnot, and the guidance from the uh, from pastor and leadership team on being back in person. Uh, so just kind of watch your emails on that about uh, faith formation uh, next week before worship service. Uh, the next thing on our list is the music ministry, uh, new music ministry kickoff. If you have, uh, if you're an, uh, a musician or an artist or an actor or anything related to the arts, uh, this is also include. You are also included in this invitation. Um, the uh, the Zoom link can be found in your email. I sent an email last week. It can also be found on Facebook, uh, but that will be Tuesday, September twenty first, seven o'clock p.m. Um, and uh, we're just going to discuss the mission, our, uh, some opportunities for us to get involved musically and whatnot, um, and uh, incorporating the other arts as well. Uh, pending our Faith Formation Club in, the, in Washington Park, we will also do a youth and children's interger intergenerational uh, music ministry kickoff as well. Um, and then um, I'm very happy to, to announce the third bullet point here, the blessing of the animals on October 3rd. Um, that will be either in person in Washington Park, um, or it will be all online via Zoom. Uh, so please bring all your fur babies and your pet friends or those that need to be adopted and whatnot um, uh, to, the, uh, to the park or either via Zoom. Uh, and uh, so we can get uh, all of these special animals blessed. Um, intern Tyler is out of the office until September 24. I talked with him briefly this morning, and he is in um, he is in uh, Saint Paul, Minnesota, doing a week of intensives. Uh, he says the weather is beautiful up there, and it's making me super jealous. So, <laughs> um, and then of course, leading today we have Dan Potosnik, our uh, digital minister. He's also our uh, preacher for today. Myself, uh, Ed Clossy, and then um, Tyler has recorded uh, a hymn or two for us. So. Um, thank you, and let's go ahead and continue in worship. Yeah, and I will also add that Pastor Brian is uh, finishing up his continuing education time off, um, and that ends today, so he'll be back uh, with us if you need to reach out to Pastor Brian uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, so I, I ask that uh, we all take a moment and prepare our hearts and minds for worship, uh, beginning with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. You all have sinned 
and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Uh, and we will uh, enter in our gathering hymn together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. I invite our uh, assistant minister, Ed, to lead us in the prayer of the day. Let us pray the prayer of the day. O oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Jesus is teaching in action in this text. are directed to the church whenever it is seduced by the world's definition of greatness, prestige, power, influence, and money. The antidote to such a concern for greatness is servanthood. This is the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the son of man is to be betrayed into human hands and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum 
And when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <laughs> Uh, so Jesus sat down, called the 12, and said to them, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the image on the screen in which Beverly was laughing about um, was me goofing off at a confirmation retreat during my second year of seminary. And at this point, I was serving at Upper Dublin Lutheran Church just outside of Philly, not Dublin, Ohio, but Upper Dublin uh, in Ambler, Pennsylvania. Uh, during this retreat, uh, just a small story that I remembered from it, uh, I was a group leader and we were given a text uh, that when reading through it, our group discovered that there was such a thing as the tribe of Dan in ancient Israel. And so they went on to call themselves the tribe of Dan all through confirmation. And I, I did not have the heart to tell them that at the end of the story, the tribe of Dan was exiled. So, uh, but during my, my second year of seminary, looking back, uh, this was just around the time when Randy and I started dating, my wife and I started dating. And um, I would travel from Philly to Oxford, Ohio, where she was in grad school. Uh, and I would take her on dates. And often we would go to Cincinnati to go to a Reds game. And so the mug that I'm holding uh, with a mustache uh, must have been purchased to carry the red legs with me to class every morning. Uh, I am going to stop the share so I can see all of you. There we go. Um, so it's, that, it's about that time of year as we approach October when almost daily baseball fans uh, check the standings to see just how close their, their team is to the playoffs. And I checked this morning uh, with the loss last night, unfortunately, uh, the Reds are two games out of the National League wild card. But that's better than most years. So we, we give thanks. So this surely will be an exciting end of uh, the season for Cincinnati and hopefully an exciting postseason. But if the Reds do make the postseason, that means someone else's home team did not. Uh, with our joy comes someone else's sorrow. And I, I have to say, sorry, not sorry to San Diego, to St. Louis, and funny enough to Philadelphia, if the Reds do make it, I'll be rooting them on. This is the way of the world. There's a hierarchy of power in baseball and in many other things, uh, a ladder that we must climb so that we might be important even at the expense of others. Someone gets to be world champs and the greatest that we, that we name. Uh, and the rest of us, well, we just have to wait until next year. But that's why we play the game, right? To find out who's the greatest. Today's gospel reading for Mark is similar to last Sunday's gospel in many ways. Um, if you remember, Jesus shares with his disciples that they're, on, um, that they're on a road that will end in torture, death, and resurrection. And then also, just like last week, the disciples don't get it. They just don't understand. And so Jesus has to set them straight again. It's almost mirror image stories, like, like the, the lectionary wants us to really understand this. It's important, though, that we follow the disciples through last week's text to today to understand what their mindset was, where they were coming from. It's really easy to, 
to judge them from this side of the resurrection because we get to hear the story back to back, but they have events that happen in the middle. So let's try to get in their heads, understand where they're coming from. We did, we, so we, we skipped a chunk of Mark 9 between last week and this week. And here's the recap. After Jesus yells at Peter for not understanding the passion narrative and tells them all to take up the cross and follow him, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up a high mountain, and there he is transfigured, right? Transfiguration Sunday, we hear the story um, a different time of the year. And up on that mountain, God says, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Now, I've been on my share of hikes out here in Portland. There are mountains, um, much larger mountains than in Ohio. And so far, I've had a, a couple of liminal moments. These are times where, you know, I, I was out in creation and felt close to God, but I did not once have that close of an encounter to the divine. Oh, but I would imagine that it throws you through a loop. Jesus tells them to tell no one about this experience. They immediately regroup with the rest of the disciples when they come down the mountain, who are overwhelmed by a crowd asking Jesus to heal a boy. Then Jesus heals this boy through prayer, and immediately, and this is Mark's gospel, everything's immediate, immediately they hit the road again on their way to Capernaum. And this is where we meet Jesus and the disciples in today's gospel. Three of them, Peter, James, and John, witness something extraordinary. The whole group of disciples witness a healing, and then like nothing happened, they're on the road again. And it's at this moment that Jesus takes this alone time with the disciples to share again that this road will end in torture, death, and resurrection. That you would think that the disciples must have learned their lesson from last time because no one says anything, probably in fear of being rebuked like Peter did last week. Even though they really don't get it, they don't understand what he's saying at all. Instead, they listen, they nod their heads in agreement, and then they start thinking. And as they start thinking, they, they utilize what they know of the world. See, they just experienced Jesus through the power of healing. And three of them have, have this mountaintop experience with, where their minds were blown. Um, they were clearly following someone who is very powerful and they wanted to be the best disciple because this is why you follow Jesus. This is why they play the game to be the greatest, right? Now, as arguments and tensions rise amongst the group, Jesus lets them bicker and then waits to intervene later when they stop for the night. And for some reason, and this always gets me too, that Jesus is surprised every time the disciples don't get it. He's astonished that they just don't understand. So he makes it clear. He says, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. And then he picks up a child and says, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Now, this child that Jesus picks up is a shocking example of the disciples, to the disciples of who is the greatest in God's eyes. See, children at this time, according to my, um, my handy Lutheran study Bible, uh, they are considered to be weak and insignificant as they have low status in society. See, to welcome a child was radical. It was countercultural and it flipped everything the disciples knew on their heads. This child is a metaphor for the radical nature of the cross. See, the true power of God comes from weakness and the truly powerful are those who lift up and welcome the lowly. This is, I believe, why the disciples time and time again cannot understand what the cross means. It's just too radically different from the reality that they've ever known, the only reality they've ever known. 
They do their best to rationalize what Jesus is telling them in a framework of their own context, including mountaintop experiences and healings. But the Son of God is so much bigger than the framework of their world, of our world. We, we fall victim to this framework all the time. I know I do. And I, I spoke earlier about baseball standings somewhat jokingly. And, um, but, but I'd like to... I'd like you to imagine for a second just how radically different the game of baseball would be uh, from every pitch to every swing if the last place team was crowned champion instead of the first place team. It would change the entire game. Balls would be better than strikes. Uh, every time someone hit a home run, we would boo. Right? There, we wouldn't shoot off fireworks out of um, out every time there was a, a home run. Uh, and then we and we would sing the seventh inning stretch, root, root, root for the home team if they don't lose. It's a shame. Every game. But one thing would stay the same. I'm sure of it, just like the disciples in Mark's gospel. I'm sure that the Reds would find a way to mess it up. They would they would come in first or something. This this turning everything on its head is what the cross does for us and for the world. See, we're Easter people called to live into Christ's resurrection in our daily lives. So how do we live into such a radical truth that turns everything upside down in this world? It would be really easy to suggest that we uh, donate to worthy causes, that we clothe the naked, that we feed the hungry. But, but the, the call of Jesus um, is something radical, even, even more radical than that. Take a moment and think about how you see yourself in relation to others. How do you see yourself in the relation to the man on the street who has no home and may ask you for a dollar? How do you see yourself in relation to the famous person on TMZ who said something wild and so they're in every news story but they make your salary there you may they make your yearly salary in a day how do you see yourself in relation to creation do you feel more important do you feel less important is there a hierarchy i don't want you to feel bad about yourself because um well, there is a hierarchy. There is, there is one, but only because the world tells us that there is. And this is why the cross is so radical and why the disciples continue to miss the point. It's not because the cross calls us to do good things into the world, but because the cross turns the world on its head in the name of love and gets rid of the hierarchy. Christ's love transcends the power structures of this world. And this is both a challenge and a blessing. See, no matter where you find yourself, either in the penthouse or the street, trust in God that you are valued and you are loved. See, what we do with this love, this unconditional love, is the charge. Jesus, when picking up the child, reminds me, um, if anyone is a Simpsons fan, Reminds me of Helen Lovejoy. Uh, Mrs. Lovejoy is the pastor's wife, Reverend Lovejoy's uh, wife in The Simpsons. And every time there's an argument amongst the community, she yells uh, above the crowd, won't somebody think of the children? Jesus is asking the disciples to think of the children, to think of the unworthy, the insignificant, the hurting and the marginalized. He's asking the disciples to think about the refugee, about the sick, about the poor, about our neighbors who, um, who actually can't get vaccinated or can't wear masks. And so we have to pull together to, to protect them. He's asking them and us to, to think of the planet, to think of creation. And I can't believe I have to add this, but in 2021, but he's asking us to think of the children in everything that we do. Jesus calls us to think about others 
before ourselves to flip the hierarchy in our own hearts. Now we're at a time where we often can fall into this trap um, of, of the world and of trying to be the greatest. And again, I do this all the time. Um, we, we consistently try to, to win an argument, to come out on top, whatever our rationale is. Instead of as followers of Christ, instead as followers of Christ, we are called today to listen to Jesus, to use our collective energy to save lives and to think about the children. See, we don't play the game to be the greatest. We're not the Cincinnati Reds. Christ died for us so that we don't have to do that. Instead, with this grace that we receive freely, we get to ignore the standings and focus on serving others. Please pray with me. Lord God, you come, we come to you in thanksgiving for your presence and your power. We ask that you open our eyes and heal our hearts, that we may be servants to all. Bless all those that find themselves devalued by our world. May they encounter this day your radically unconditional love. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of community, we pray for the church around the world. Unite us in our love for you. Help us overcome our divisions so that we are encouraged to work together for your sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, we pray for this hurting earth. Awaken in us a new desire to care for this world and empower us to support agencies, organizations, and individual efforts to heal our environment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of cooperation, we pray for nations of the world embroiled in conflict, especially Afghanistan. Inspire leaders to listen to each other and work towards peaceful solutions to disagreements. Protect the vulnerable, especially children who cannot find safety in their home or country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, we pray for all who live with mental or physical illness. Help them find appropriate care. Bring healing and wholeness when the path forward seems bleak. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God of compassion, we pray for the young people of this congregation. Renew in us your call to welcome the children in our midst. As they grow, strengthen their faith and commitment to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of consolation, we give you thanks for our loved ones who have died, and we pray for all who grieve today. Shine your grace on all your saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, this, this, thank you, Ed. This brings us to uh, the time in our service uh, where we, we lift up our offerings. Uh, I want to give thanks to uh, the whole of the community uh, that gives uh, their, their, their time, their energy, their expertise, and, uh, and gifts of, of finances. Um, there's a QR code uh, if you feel called to, to make a gift to the congregation, or you can send a check directly to uh, the church. Um, I want to lift up just how I haven't been able to speak about this for because um, Pastor Brian or, or intern Tyler shares their thoughts or an offering. Um, I just feel uh, very uh, proud uh, and humbled uh, from the congregation standpoint that we are, are supporting so many amazing uh, organizations and, and answer the call to um, especially around uh, wildfire relief, uh, uh, Haiti uh, earthquake relief, um, Afghani refugee relief, um, uh, the ability to listen to where God is calling us and answer that call is holy. And so I want to thank you all for, for making that possible. Uh, I invite Ed to lead us in our offering prayer. Let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing. People of God, you are Christ's body bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, Bless you now and forever. Amen.
peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And there is Zoe with uh, Grandma Zanger, and we thank them for, for sending us out today. Um, I want to thank you all for being a part of worship and being a part of the First Lutheran Faith Community. Uh, again, whether you are um, here live or, or in a recording. Um, I invite everyone here to, to stay on for uh, fellowship, just so you know we can see each other's faces and check in with one another. Um, but uh, if, again, if Pastor Brian will be back tomorrow. If you need to speak to him directly, his number's on the screen. Otherwise, uh, you can email any of the staff. Go in peace, share the love of God. Thanks be to God. <laughs>